So I got a question the other day and people want to know, man, how are the Japanese maple little trees doing that we started so, so long ago? Well, let's take a look at that now and see just how they're doing. All right, guys, let's take the walk down the hoop house. Look at all these beautiful, beautiful rhododendrons. I know this is about Japanese maple, but I love it here in the wintertime. All these roadies buds are just different colors and different textures and different everything, man. I just love those little buds. Look at this variety. This little variety right here. Heck, which one is this? This is North. Look at those beautiful bright red buds that haven't flowered out yet. Right next to one with yellow buds. And look at the colors on the buds. It's just so fascinating. All right. Back to the Japanese maples. So let's take the little walk down, see what's going on in the hoop house today. We got all our figs inside. You guys probably saw that video. I think I made a video. Brought them all in for the winter a couple months ago, and they're sitting nice and beautiful in their little home, all dormant. And what else do we have down there? There's our little project. There it is, our little project. All of our English laurel tidy back in there. And there's the Japanese maples. So, this is what's going on with these guys right now. They are completely dormant, as you can see. Because we're in the hoop house, we've still got a few little leaves kind of hanging on there. They're all, you know, they're dead, and these leaves are just haven't fallen off yet. Because we're inside of a protected hoop house, and there's not a lot of wind that gets in here to blow them away or rain to wash them down. But you can see the plants are very dormant. And this is what they look like. This is what they've done. So, we've got here, let's see if we can get down here a little better. This is a... Uh, little cedar tree I found out on the property and just potted it up but anyway Japanese maples are doing well we've got long branches growing up these guys are probably three feet some of them some of them are only about two feet we've got a two foot tall one right here but all of them are beautiful and red through the summer I want to show you something though so what I did with these guys oh and by the way if you guys haven't seen it yet, you got to go back to the first video. These are the same seeds that we collected out in the community two, over two years ago. And here they finally are, two years ago. And this is the end result of them. Well, not the final result, but this is where they're at right now. And this is how they're doing. But I want to tell you something. As I've watched these guys, hold on just a sec. All right, now we can talk. So as i've been watching these guys over the summer i started out last spring watching all these things leaf out and if you guys know anything about japanese maples which i'm sure you do they're all different colors all different shapes and sizes and the leaves on the same varieties or same types of japanese maples can also vary now if you take cuttings or scions and you graft them onto a rootstock, you're going to get a clone of that plant. But when you do something like this, when you take seeds and you germinate them, you're going to get a lot of variation in the leaf cut, the leaf color and in the growth of the plant overall and you know just how it does because of the genetic variability. So I watched them through the spring, the summer, and the fall and I found the most red ones. And I want to show them to you right now. All right, I set them over here. There's three of them total, and you can see the leaves are still kind of hanging on there. Um, these guys, yeah, I mean, they're, the, the redness has kind of faded a little bit because we're in the middle of winter right now, and these trees are dormant. But you can see those, the, these particular trees here, these three were a little hardier and just more bright red than the others, the leaves. And so, and obviously they, they were one of the longest to hang on to the, the trees. And so I set them aside because I want these three out of my property. They were absolutely beautiful, but these, this is what you want to do. You want to separate them out. You want to look for the most red. You want to look for the ones with the most desirable traits for you and then separate them out for your own purposes. And now there's one more really cool thing about this, and that is those little maples are that red and we're inside of a hoop house that has 50% shade cloth over it. So this little area in here is shaded out by 50%. And if you guys watched that video that I made last summer, if you haven't, go click on it up in the corner now. I think it's that corner. 
go click on that, watch that video, but I actually did a little experiment last summer where I took some of these Japanese maples, I put them out in full sun when they were leafed out, and we saw what the sun did within a pretty short amount of time. I think it was like a week or two or something like that that I left them out in the sun. Then we brought them back in here and we compared them to what the leaves looked like inside this hoop house. And the ones that were out in the full sun for just a short amount of time were brighter red. They were deeper red, really, and just showing off their colors a lot more because the sun will do that with the maples. To get that real red color, you really got to have them out in full sun or as much sun as you can get. They'll turn a little more green when they're more shaded. So that's the cool thing about this is I separated out those Japanese maples. You saw how red the leaves were and that's in 50% shade. So just imagine what they're going to do out in the full sun. So I'm really excited to get those guys planted out in my landscape and see what they do over the years. So other than that, there's not a whole lot going on with them right now because they're all dormant. But they're going to wake up this spring, and we're going to have some awesome Japanese maples to do all kinds of fun things with. i got some plans in the future. Um, possibly going to be doing some grafting with these guys. I've been planning ahead and thinking about that for a while. I've got a lot of projects, though. I'm really going to try and get to that one. But there they are. That's what they've done so far. Th these are those original seeds that we took two years ago. Ba go back, watch that first video. I'll put a link up in the corner here. But... Uh, here we are just over two years later in the winter and some of them are three foot tall. One of them here looks like about four foot tall and uh, some of them are two foot, but you know, that's what you get with that genetic variability when you're planting seeds. You're not going to get the exact clones, but beautiful little plants ready to go out on anyone's landscape, graft or do whatever else you want to do with them. Well, I hope that satisfies your guys' curiosity, and I hope you've enjoyed this little Japanese maple series so far. I really enjoyed making it. It's been a lot of fun, and we've learned a lot with these Japanese maples as we've gone through the seasons. Over two years, it's amazing what happens with these little plants in just a couple of years. So, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Spring's coming. I'm so excited. I'm getting more excited every day for spring. I'm getting more video ideas in my head. People are giving me all kinds of ideas and things we can do around here, so... Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you want to follow along and see all those videos that are coming this spring. I hope you guys have an awesome week. I'll see you in the next video. Adios.